Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be taking a look at my most recent um, Packer Bell acquisition. Um, we've already seen it a few times on the channel, but today we're going to actually get to play with it. Um, this is the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD, manufactured on March 28th of 1995. This computer features a 66 MHz 486 DX2. Originally came with a 500 more, 540 megabyte hard drive and 8 megabytes of RAM and a um, dual speed CD-ROM drive. Currently it has um, a CF card slot in it um, with a 2 gig card in it. Um, it. It now has 24 megabytes of RAM but it still has the same CD-ROM drive here and this is the, indeed the 3x3 Packard Bell case. and. Um, this is the um, current, only the current, this is, I can't talk, this is currently the only 486 I have in my collection and um, and I felt like I needed to um, add one to my collection at some point. I've had a few in the past, but so far this has been my favorite. Um, this is the third 486 Packard Bell that I've had. Um, the first one was a Packard Bell Legend 20 CD, quite a bit similar to this, um, similar era as well. But the um, CPU oscillator coil on the motherboard decided to um, desolder itself from the board and come flying off, causing the system to just act completely freaky. So unfortunately I had to chuck that system. I didn't have the, um, the uh, supplies or experience to repair that. And then, not long after that, I acquired a Packard Bell PB1750 CDT, which was um, which used the PB450 Plus motherboard, just like the 20 CD. Had a mini tower case like this one right here. But um, it was a great 486 system, and I had it for several years until I had to sell it about a year ago. But thankfully, um, I now have this, the Legend 204 CD, and with a little bit of elbow grease, as you saw in a previous video, we got this computer up and running beautifully. So now, let's enjoy the fruits of our labor and play around with this system a little bit and see what I've been doing with it. Alright, let's fire it up. KVM inputs. And it likes to do this at times. Um, it likes to have a RAM failure. So let me reboot this. And there we go. Um, I don't know why it likes to do that sometimes, but it does. It's been doing that ever since I um, took it from 40-some megabytes of RAM down to 24 megs, but no no big deal. And I've got a custom uh, MS doll start menu thanks to uh, YouTube user The Flying Scotsman. We've got five options, Microsoft Windows, DOS Gaming with CD-ROM support, DOS gaming with no CD-ROM support, minimal DOS setup with mouse support, and just plain old minimum DOS setup. We'll start with um, Microsoft Windows. In a moment we will be switching to my VGA capture card. And we're running Windows for Workgroups 3.11, which is what the system originally shipped with. Alright, let's switch over to that VGA capture, shall we? 
All right, we're here at the program manager on the Legend 204 CD, and as I do with a lot of my Windows 3.1 systems, I'm running it with um, plug-in for Windows, which um, gives the program manager a lot more uh, capabilities. It's like nested program groups, for one thing. But anyway, um, this is the 1994-1995 software pack that um, Packard Bell used in that era. Um, this was used in late 94, early 95. So this is um, software that I wouldn't have used as a child, but I still find it really nice to have. For instance, the um, Packard Bell Navigator is, a quite, is quite a bit different on here. Welcome to Packard Bell's Navigator. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. Yeah, this was um, a lot more simpler than the um, house environment that I um, grew up with with Navigator on my Legend 822 CDT. Um, you just get these four buttons here, Learning Center, Software, Kid Space, and Workspace, or you can click down here on the bottom left and you get this um, hallway interface which is a little bit more intuitive like we can go to the software room here again it's just a bunch of big buttons got the Microsoft Entertainment Pack here with Ski Free ouch Jay's gonna isolate that I just know he is I have to admit, I'm not doing too bad on Ski Free today. <laughs> I should have known I, that would happen as soon as I said that. Alright. Time for um, us to meet the source of many a child's nightmare in the 90s. Myself included, I'm ashamed to say. Or proud, uh, however you may want to look at it. Once we get to 1985 meters, good year by the way, shame I wasn't born yet, we shall meet an old friend of ours. And there he is, the source of all our nightmares, Mr. Yeti. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much how Navigator was um, before the big change over to the house environment. I guess I've shown that to you guys before, but um, one thing I, I know I've shown several times, in fact I've made special videos about it, is the um, famous Packard Bell demo that was shown on these systems in late 1994, early 1995. And this was used as in um, when they were on display in stores to show you what these systems were like. Kind of an advertisement. And we and an easy way to get to it is through the screensaver. I think it's this one right here. So here we go.
Okay, the background looks a little bit screwy now, but um, <laughs> that was the infamous Packard Bell demo. And I have um, videos of that on my channel already, so I um, hope that didn't bore you guys. Um, let's go into the to the uh, Microsoft Applications directory. Um, we've got Microsoft Works. Multimedia Edition. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to type there. Yeah. <laughs> and here's Microsoft Office, but unfortunately I'm having a pretty bizarre issue with it. When you try to open Microsoft Word or any of these other Office programs, this is version 4.2 by the way, you get this error saying, application error, call to undefined Dynalink. And I don't know what this means, and I really don't feel like um, reinstalling all the software on this computer just to get this to work. So if you guys have any idea on how I can fix that, please let me know. Not, not that I'm going to be typing any big novels on this computer, but it'd be, it's nice to have everything up and running as it should. And I've even got Microsoft Bob there. We'll take a look at that again some other day. And we've also got my utilities. <laughs> Alright, let's head on to the games folder. That's what you guys came here for anyway, wasn't it? Um, got all the Maxis games here. Some Disney stuff here. And Toonland, which did not come with this computer. It did on later Packard Bells, but not on this one. Living Books, Magic School Bus, which if I showed that on video, Scholastics will have my channel shut down quicker than um, uh, a certain friend of mine's ex-girlfriend uh, at a Golden Corral. <laughs> but what I do want to show is... Um, one of the bundled games that did come with this computer. If I can find a disc for it. Ah, here we go. Found it. 3D Body Adventure. This is what... This is one of the games this computer was famous for, actually. This era of, of Packard Bells, that is. A lot of people have fond memories of playing 3D Human Body on um, their Packard Bells. I unfortunately missed out on that because I um, had a slightly newer one that had newer software on there, so yeah. Anyway, um, we can go to the Multimedia Applications directory here, and we got 3D Body here. and. This is the only CD that I have that's legit from this software pack. I would love to find the rest of them. So if you have the software that came with your with a late 1994, early 1995 Packard Bell computer, um, let me know because I'm interested in buying that off of you. So let's go ahead and open up 3D Body. It's actually going to take us into DOS. Sorry for the overscan there. Um, does my insurance cover this? Please wait. This is a double speed CD ROM, so you gotta have patience. <laughs> Um, shouldn't this guy have consent first? Use the arrow keys or move the mouse to rotate the body. Click the mouse or hit any key to get a cursor. 
what's interesting about this game is, is that this game actually came with um, 3D glasses. So, hence the name 3D Body Adventure, but I don't have those glasses. I do have a box copy of the non-OEM version of this, but it's still sealed and I would like to keep it that way. Um, hmm. What body part should we take a look at? Uh, the reproductive system. Uh, this is a family channel, so no. <laughs> but let's take a look at the stomach. The stomach. And it gives you information about the stomach here. By the way, this is from, uh... Ooh. Ooh. It's not a tumor. You know what? TMI. TMI. <laughs> but let's check out some of the more gamey type uh, aspects of um, 3D Body Adventure. By the way, this was published by uh, Knowledge Adventure back in um, 1994. Um, that's a lot of pressure. Doctor, we just received four new admissions, and they are all in serious condition. To interview a patient, get more information, or start a procedure, just click on the appropriate console. Click to start. I'll be honest with you, I've never played this before. Okay, this, this is a first person type of thing, like Doom. Painful right ankle anxiety. Well, personally, I have the anxiety, but not the ankle. My ankle is thankfully fine. Uh, what's this young and up to? Um, doctor, I was bitten by a crazy dog yesterday, and I'm really scared. The bite hurts a lot. I wasn't even doing anything to the dog. My mom's worried I might get rabies. She said you were gonna stick me in the stomach with a bunch of really big needles. Can I leave now? Ah, jeez. Um, you know what? <laughs> Let's uh. Let's, let's go, that was a little too intense. <laughs> and yes, I know, I'm a wimp. But here's something I do enjoy. Let's play Body Recall. Click on one of the 12 tiles to see what lies underneath it. Remember what you see. Concentration is the key. It was a, um... It was a lull back in the mid-90s for um, edutainment games to have one of these picture-matching uh, mini-games. Seems like just about everyone had them. Oh. If that's the brain, where's Pinky? They're Pinky. They're Pinky in the brain, 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 brain. And onions. Lungs.
Alright. Great job. Oh why, well, thank you. And now let's get the heck out of here. What's nice about this is that it takes you to this amusing little um customized knowledge adventure um exit screen where you can go to the other bundled knowledge adventure games on this um on this uh, Packard Bell including Kid Zoo, Undersea Adventure, Space Adventure, 3D Dinosaur Adventure, Speed, some kind of knowledge adventure demo, and you can also um, go back into Windows or just shut the computer down. But, and, but we want to go back into Windows, but Purser is not letting me go down to that point because it is not a nice person. Okay, what did I just do? I hit escape. This might be rebooting the computer, I don't know. What have I done? What have I done? Okay, hard drive LEDs blink. Okay, we're going back into Windows. That's what we wanted in the first place. And we'll take our 3D body game out of the CD-ROM drive for future traumatic experiences. But yeah, I need to find the rest of these CDs somewhere. Um, what else can I show? Uh, got some Sierra stuff here, but it's the uh, typical stuff you usually see. Okay, I, I got it, I got it. I'm gonna show you a game that um, that you never really hear about much um, compared to its more serious counterpart. It's a little game called The Incredible Tune Machine. Based on The Incredible Machine, this one is a little bit zanier and involves the classic cat and mouse cartoon stereotype. So um, let's go ahead and fire that up. Yes, it is in the CD drive. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. You know what, maybe I need to learn to have more patience in life. Huh. This is a burnt CD, so maybe the CD is burnt at a um, too fast of a speed for a double speed CD-ROM drive, which can happen. Yeah, we're not going to be looking at Incredible Tune Machine today, unfortunately. Sorry about that, but that's just the way life goes some days. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I really don't want to bore you with um, games you've already seen a million times on this channel, but um, I think what we'll do is we'll reboot the computer and check out some DOS games. Okay, we're back at our DOS startup menu. Um, I think we're just going to do DOS gaming with no CD-ROM support because I don't plan on using the CD-ROM today for DOS gaming. Go ahead, test that extended memory, why don't you? And of course, Jay always has to put in an inside joke as an echo line on these things. So let's see what it is for this. In my country, there is problem. Can't say I remember what that one's about, but um, I'm sure it's something disturbing. <laughs> so I want to play a little bit of um, SimCity 2000, actually. because um, the other day when I was at my local Goodwill, I discovered um, a box copy of SimCity 2004 MS-DOS. Complete packaging, still had all the original books, manuals, and floppy disk in it, and I was very tickled to find that. So um, we're going to go ahead and give that a try on here. Once I figure out what directory it's in. Oh yeah. 
always used to playing the Windows version. I've really played the DOS version before. But it's essentially the same thing, I suppose. This is my registered property. Don't forget that! Oh, that's a classic line there. Um, let's call this, uh... Nostalgiaville. Let's just start our town over here. The little crossroads here. Put a police station. Fire station. Give ourselves a few water pumps while we're at it. And of course, we're going to need a power plant. Zzz, I love that noise. <laughs> Well, it's a nice, healthy chunk of residential zoning there. Some industrial zoning there that everyone hates so much, but it has to be there anyway. Because the, the Industrial Revolution happened, and, well, we just gotta deal with it. <laughs> and we'll build another residential area right here. And this is now becoming a very lazy game reviewer um, approved video, I must say. And I build us some power lines to go over here. You know what, let's turn that auto budget on, <laughs> or else that's going to annoy the heck out of me. Go. Now I'll lay some pipe. By the way, the year is supposedly 1901. How long ago was that? That was. Uh, 117 years ago. That was a good long time ago. All right, we're already seeing development. Let's speed it up. And I'm seeing a lot of establishments that probably shouldn't have even existed in 1901, or 1903, I should say. And let's blow it all up. Of course it has an earthquake in, a wrong, in the wrong location. Ten killed in Quake. Oh, that's not my problem, but okay. Where were we? Where's our town or what's left of it? Does a tornado always have to spawn where the town isn't? <laughs> okay, it's getting kind of close. Looks like it might hurt this industrial zone right here, maybe some of these houses. Oh, and it's going to completely avoid it. Great. Thank you, tornado. Thank you. You did. He didn't do. Nature didn't do what I wanted to do. That's just not fair. You know what, I'm so mad I'm leaving. Well, enough of that. 
And let's try one more DOS game. Let's see what we got here. Um, um, I'll just play a little bit of Commander Keen. This is another game I'm surprised I didn't have as a child. It's a good, fun little game. Good old classic DOS platforming. All right, enough of that. All right, that was um, an overview of the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD, currently the oldest um, Packard Bell in my collection, um, by manufacturing date, that is. So, we'll go ahead and shut her on down. Until next time, this is Billy Core reminding you we have new videos every Tuesday, and Thursday, sometimes in between if there's a special event. And also, if you want to, um, go ahead and support me on Patreon. That would be great. Link to that is in the description. So we'll go ahead and shut down Windows. And until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.